Broadcasting from the Teddy Belanger Studio in Rome, New York. Welcome into episode 78 of the Avits and Beyond. My name is Todd Emanuele, and joining me today, special guest. I've been wanting to have this guy on for quite a while. He is the program director for Rock in the Suburbs Radio, among many other things. Uh, Keith Jacobson is here. Keith, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks, Todd. Thanks for having me. We finally broke you down and got you on here. Uh, so, Rock in the Suburbs Radio. Tell me where this all came from, because this is such a cool uh, thing that you have going here. Uh, tell me about it. Well, so it was uh, a crazy idea that I had, uh, I think, going on uh, about three years ago from about right now. And, uh, you know, Rock in the Suburbs podcast I was a member of the uh, that community. And uh, I reached out to uh, the hosts, uh um, Jim Lenahan and uh, Patrick Foster and said, I have a crazy idea. I, I, what do you guys think of it? And uh, they loved it. And uh, so here we are three years later, we have a radio station that's been running for three years, uh, 24 seven uh, with some, uh, well, a number of DJs with shows, including myself on Sunday mornings, the Sunday papers. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the logo. That's your show logo that, behind me there. That's right. Yes. Uh, it's on from 10 a.m. till 12 noon Eastern on Sunday mornings. Most of the time, I'm going to say we were on pretty much a summer hiatus here. I was very busy uh, this summer, but as things um, hopefully do slow down here, it will be in a much um, back to a much um, more regular um, schedule. And uh, so uh, that, but there's a number of shows on there. Of course, your show, Todd, on Friday uh, evenings. Um, and uh, also when there's not uh, programming from a DJ, we do have uh, our own AI. Uh, we refer to uh, that DJ as uh, Otto and Otto. that's uh, Otto DJ. And so, you know, we've fed the machine with a lot of uh, rock in the suburbs uh, adjacent music. And uh, and so that's the station. And, so it's all uh, that's AI based, huh? They just pick random stuff and and play it. It, it is. There's uh, what what you do is you you sort of put in like uh, you put in a rotation. You you flag the different um, tracks, you know, as uh, heavy rotation or you know uh, core or they actually uh, Jim and Patrick at one time did a suburbs uh, one thousand uh, countdown. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of those songs are uh, also in the uh, library on there. So, uh, cool. so yeah, so that's, uh, that's what's on there. It's at suburbsradio.com uh, or you can uh, search it up on, um, uh, it's on some of the different streaming services, you know, some of the uh, ones out there like tune in, they, they want uh, like a million dollars to get it yeah. on there. And so yeah. you won't find it on TuneIn, but you can manually add it um, on oh, okay. there. So, yeah. So, um, and, and what I like, everything's stored in Mixcloud. So yeah. you can go to Mixcloud and find every show, every yep. episode of every show. It's all archived on there. Usually uh, Mixcloud, uh, it'll end up, uh, so you go to Mixcloud.com, search up uh, Rock in the Suburbs Radio, and uh, all the shows are on there. And they uh, usually appear. Now it depends on um, me as the uh, general manager, or I have uh, Bill Mulligan who helps me out. But usually they all appear the same night, uh, that night when uh, the shows air. Did I give you the wrong title? I said program director. You're the well, general manager. I mean, I'm I'm both, I guess. So uh, <laughs> you do I program all the shows in. Yeah. So. I I do. Yes, that's true. So. Um, you know, I don't get paid anything for it, so uh, I'm I'm waiting for my first paycheck for it, but that's okay. So I've been waiting I, for a while. On I that. yeah, I get I get paid. It's it's just fun to do. So this is fun. I absolutely love doing this. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I was a radio guy for a long time. The station that I worked for for almost 20 years was sold, and we were all let go. And I found I had to find a real job. So I started doing other stuff and I missed radio. And my neighbor, Mike Coley, who has a show, who's been a guest on this show, but it has a show on Rock in the Suburbs Radio, told me about this. And uh, you guys welcome me in with open arms. And I, I love doing this every single week. Well, we appreciate your commitment to the station. And uh, you've drawn in some of the biggest uh, numbers on here. Uh, you've had some very uh, um, interesting guests on. 
New York Times bestselling author Colleen Hoover. I have not had any guests on like that. So, uh, <laughs> does anyone uh, else do? I, I mean, I've listened to most of the shows. Does anyone else do interviews and stuff? No, like that? there's really not too much else that's uh, out there that's interview. It, I'd say most everything else is is just a music oriented uh, program. You know, with different. Uh, Everybody has a little bit of their own oh, different sure. touch that they put on the show. It's we like to call it freeform radio at its best. And honestly, it is. Yeah, anybody can play whatever they want. No, as a program director, I'm not going to uh, com- complain. And I've heard some pretty awful stuff at times too. I hear lots of great stuff, but every once in a while, I hear some awful stuff. I'm just like, but you know, it's free. Freeform radio at its best. I hope they don't complain about my show. I always get nervous that, you know, everyone else is playing music and here I'm doing this totally different thing. No, no uh, uh, we get very few complaints. Very few right. complaints. Well, I don't can't think of any complaints, really. Well, that's, I was going to say very few. Yeah. That means yeah. there's some. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I take that back. I, no complaints that I really uh, receive. So that, that's good. That's that's awesome. I just yeah. love doing this. I've always had this idea for this type of show. And uh being you know based around the avids and the the avid community i know you like the avid brothers you're a fan you've seen them i'm a fan i've seen them a few times yes so um the community the fans are amazing so i i came into this with support already and people listening which helped a lot but it's also helped bring in people like colleen hoover who's an avid brothers fanatic like she's been to a million shows and loves them so when i reached out to her she's like yeah i'll come on i'm like mm, okay <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. uh, kind of awesome. crazy but no uh, I, that's awesome and it's great to bring a different audience too because i yeah. think a lot of the audience is around the community of you know rock in the suburbs so that's the sure. core audience and tell then other about, people have brought, brought brought that in so tell me about rock in the suburbs the podcast because i honestly i'm gonna say i've never really listened to it Oh my gosh, you're on this, you're on the flagship uh, radio station. I think uh, we're gonna have should to I cut that, that out. No, 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 that's I right. should no. Admit that. No, no. So <laughs> I don't even know how many episodes that. Uh, so that's hosted, as I said earlier, by um, Jim Lenahan and Patrick Foster. Uh, and don't tell them I said that, by the way. I, well, yeah, that's that's okay. So uh, if I do, they, they may they may uh, cancel your uh, your show off the Damn air it. here, Todd. Dang so it. I'll I'll save it. Don't worry, but. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they uh, actually, I'm going to pull it up because it's a it's a um, amazing number. So of uh, oh, I'm still on airplane mode on my uh, iPad here. Yeah, from, you've been uh, traveling all day. My, That's true. my flight uh, earlier. Um, but I I it's uh, hang on, you know, this is uh, compelling radio here as we uh, try to find it here. But the today was episode number one thousand nine hundred and fifty seven. Wow. Of the Rock in the Suburbs podcast. So and um, it's every day, but every day tongue in cheek. It's Monday through Friday, not okay. Saturdays and Sundays, but right. new content every day, um, different uh, topics every day. Uh, some of the episodes are hosted uh, by both Jim and Patrick. Sometimes mm-hmm. you'll find them hosted by Jim or Patrick separate. Um, and so they're just two music loving guys. They actually had a podcast prior to this. Um, I think I can talk about it here, but uh, it was produced by USA Today. They both worked at USA Today oh, wow. and it was called Dad Rock. And um, and it was a that's how I first came across it and uh, and started listening. And there was a community that built up around that podcast. And then uh, I think Jim left USA Today, so the podcast you know stopped. Right. And uh, and then I don't know how much longer after he left there, but eventually, all of a sudden, there was a uh, Rock in the Suburbs uh, showed up, and uh, and I think a lot of the community members knew them from Dad Rock, and uh, and then followed uh, them over to Rock in the Suburbs. So and do, they do, do they do interviews and stuff on there? I've they, seen some they, of their stuff. yeah. There's in, there's interviews. Uh, they've had a number of musicians on there, uh, authors. Um, so sometimes the interview format, sometimes it's just uh, history. Uh, sometimes you know, they, every month there's um, new music episodes, and oh. so the members of the community will call in and uh, give suggestions like what what was their favorite album of the last month they listened to, or what's a new track that they've listened to. Um, so, you know, there's, uh, episodes like that and there's just a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of, you can imagine with 1,957 episodes that there's uh, a lot of different, uh, 
topics that have been uh, discussed. So I'm going to start listening. I feel it, stupid that I haven't you, listened. You should. I think I you should put in to do a, uh, you know, they've done some uh, artist weeks. So the whole yeah. week would be digging into an artist. Maybe you should go on as a guest and uh, do the Avet Brother weeks so, or Avet Brothers week. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Put in a word for me. I'd love to do that. Yeah. So what's amazing about it, though, is that, oh, I mean, amazing they have 1,957 episodes out there. But also there's a whole community that built up around it, the show. And so, um, you know, there's been, you know, they've hosted now uh, over the last few years, a number of uh, suburbs fests. So they'll take over a town for a weekend and everybody kind of comes to that uh, city and hangs out. And, um, you know, during the pandemic, one of the, uh, the reason that the community really came together was during the pandemic, everybody was bored. And on Friday evenings, um, so Patrick um, is in a band, uh, Wingtip Slope, and Friday nights were usually uh, band practice nights. And um, during the pandemic, they couldn't get together and practice. And so they had the idea of, well, why don't we host an online uh, hootenanny? And so on Friday nights during the pandemic, oh, for a while, it was like every Friday night. And as things started to open up, it wasn't as often, but it was a hootenanny. So everybody got on Zoom, hung out. Uh, the musicians that are in the group, they would, you know, play a song. Um, cool. Yeah. And then the non-musician types like myself, uh, we would just hang out and uh, have a good time. And so we all kind of got to know each other even more than if you can imagine. And uh, and so then they had the first Suburbs Fest. I think it was in uh, the summer of uh, tw of 2021. I'm, I'm almost certain of that. Okay. And it was held in Washington, uh, D.C., which is where Jim and Patrick are based out of. And uh, it was a great time. So um, uh, Mike Coley, your neighbor, was there. Now, I had actually met Mike earlier that summer. Um, I came through uh, Rome. I would brought, Yeah, I brought my oldest son. Uh, we went uh, on a road trip and we went to Cooperstown. Oh, OK. Uh, but we stopped at Copper City uh, Brewery. Great and place. I, I don't know if I've told you this. I feel like maybe we've messaged this, but uh, my mom is from uh, upstate New York. She was from Utica, New York. Oh, okay. Uh, and my dad served at Griffiths uh, Air Force Base no there kidding. in Rome. So okay. I have family connections uh, to the area there. And, and um, so I stopped at Copper City and uh, met Mike there for the first time and had some, uh, some drinks there. But uh, Back to oh, one other fun fact is that uh, are you a golfer at all? So, I am. You I know am. the Hidden Valley uh, Golf Course there. Sure. Yeah. So that was my that was my uh, grandfather. That was his farm. So the, the really yeah you know, no the house the house that's there was that was a house that my mom uh, grew up in. So my son and I played uh, golf oh, there, which was kind of wow. fun. Yeah. That so be awesome. My grandfather sold it so they could put through the throughway through there, uh, yeah. but they kept part of that, you know, and turned it into a golf course. And so uh, you'll notice next time you go there that uh, it's on Castle Road, and that's uh, that was my uh, grandfather's uh, last name. So wow. uh, that is so, yeah. very cool. I yeah. did not know this. We have never talked okay. about. All this. right, then I okay. Then uh, I thought maybe I had messaged you at some point about maybe that, so, I really but, have a bad memory too. No, that's I, okay. I would have remembered that. That that's okay, but that's my. Uh, connection to the area there. But so back to uh, Suburbs Fest. So that first one was in uh, Washington, D.C. and mm -hmm. was three nights of music. Uh, one night was a really like a hootenanny at a, a brewery um, where everybody would get up and play a song. It was like an open mic night. Um, and then the second night was, um, oh, at a VFW hall or something was a, they had multiple bands play. Yeah. And then the third night was the band Frank Muffin, who have become friends of the podcast and the community, uh, and they put on a concert there. So since then, they've had um, a few more suburbs fests. There's been uh, there was one in Arlington Heights, Illinois, that I attended. Uh, there was one in Louisville, uh, Kentucky, uh, last year, and then this past year they did one in Rockford, uh, Illinois, and I did not make that one. However, I will make the Suburbs Fest 2025 because it has been announced and it's uh, going to be held in, in Rome, uh, New York. No, <laughs> not Rome, New York. Uh, ah. Grand, it's going to be in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I'm okay. uh, ba based here. So, oh, that's uh, nice for you, definitely. Yes. So, um, I'm helping to uh, plan it, and uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good time. I think it's the 
I don't have the date here right in front of me, but I think it's the first uh, weekend in uh, August. So look okay. forward to it. We, everybody looks forward to that weekend. We have a blast. Uh, it's a great time. But people that I try to explain about this that have nothing to do with it think it's the craziest thing that, uh, you know, all these people have come together on the Internet and that now are friends. Like, it's a it's a whole friend group. Yeah. Um, Sounds like the Avit fan base. If yeah. you, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with how they are, but it's the same way. It's like a family. Yeah, it 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 has become that, and uh, it's it's crazy. And so for me, you know, I'm somebody that travels a lot around the country for work. Um, it, it gives me, uh, you know, some different friends in different places if I happen to be there. So it's uh, it, it it's been uh, it's been fun. I mean, it's fun for me. It's fun. I think it's fun for everybody. So um, and I, I do. Ju- if I showed up, would I be kicked out because I said what I said about the show or not listening to their podcast? Or I, I got I you, be, co- I got you covered. I'll, we'll okay. we'll come up with something. So uh, <laughs> no, you if you showed up, all are welcome. All are welcome, uh, and it's a great a great time uh, if you're a music you know lover. So yeah. um, I just got back personally from the. I was at the Bourbon and Beyond Festival in. Yeah, uh, this, this Louisville. was our next topic. Yeah, I, Louisville this last this past weekend. And I attended with a couple members of the uh, community. And this is my third year that I've gone. And uh, there's a couple members of the community that live in uh, Louisville that uh, I went with. And then uh, every year, it seems like somebody else, you know, from out of town comes in uh, for that. So so let me ask you one thing before we get to the bourbon and beyond thing, because I know we're going to spend a lot of time. on it. This always goes by so fast, by the way. Um, we only have so much time here. Uh, actually, it's unlimited well, time on StreamYard, but I'm the program director i mean your show oh. could, we we could do a special five-hour show i mean that's fine so <laughs> you fine got that much me. to talk about i mean that's <laughs> fine uh but yeah that is true you could put an extra 10 minutes on the show if you have absolutely to. i have the ability so one thing i wanted to ask though about the radio station was how, well two things one thing is how many shows are on there right now do you know off the top of your head i don't know the count but i'm gonna say that there are probably close to 30 uh, okay. in total i would and say people so. that host these shows are from all over the world right? they they are yes yeah yep so but most are in the u in the u.s uh we have had uh and actually he um is on a hiatus right now but uh, we had a host that lived in scotland uh wow. stephen routledge uh okay. who yeah. lives over in scotland now he moved recently and he's been on hi- hiatus. So we're hoping he comes back on, on the air. The invitation is always uh, there, but uh, definitely all around uh, the, the country and just a lot of unique um, tastes. And again, everybody has, because it's free form, everybody has their own little thing that they, uh, that they like, you know? So like for me, I'm, it's Sunday morning. So I usually from, you know, at 10 o'clock, I'm not, kicking out the jams right at 10 o'clock, right? I'm easing into it. So, you know, I like a lot of Americana. um, And so you're going to hear early on, you're going to hear more of Americana. And as it gets a little bit later, past that 11 o'clock hour, you might start to hear a little bit more indie rock in that mix. So, um, you know, it's it's eclectic, but I try to ease into it just because I know it's the morning. Um, And personally, me, I need to ease into that a little (laughs) bit in the day. So. Yeah. Correct. I just think it's crazy. There's 30, 30 different shows on the network, on the radio station, and two of them originate from the same street in that's, Rome, New York. Yeah, I would have got to that. That, that is uh, that that is a little crazy. So Mike Coley and myself. If any of your other, if, if any of your neighbors want to have a show too, <laughs> just let me know, and then we'll have three from your street. Well, so. I do have a guy across the street that might be interested. That <laughs> be yeah. Well, anybody, yeah, uh, we're, we're we're welcome to anybody. So so well, that was my other question that I wanted to ask. If someone has an idea for a show. Can they just reach out to you and be like, "Hey, I've got this idea. I can I can I put this on the air?" I know sure. you test it out to make sure it would work or whatever, but sure, yeah, yeah, they can reach out to me. Uh, you can find me on uh, you can find me on Facebook and probably just drop me a a, a DM on there and okay. uh, we can talk. But yeah, for sure, always looking for more uh, content on there. So. Yeah, that's that's cool. Okay, so if anyone out there listening wants to do a radio show, contact Keith, and uh, we can get you on. He knows people. Uh, I do, can... I do. All right, the, so... the the pay again <laughs> yeah. is not existent. So I, I have a funny story about that. So you talk about how you were in radio. You had actually had a paying job in radio, but uh, kind of, yeah, well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm sure it didn't pay a lot, right? I know that's the the industry, but uh, so I, when I was in college, I went to Western Michigan uh, University in Kalamazoo, Michigan, mm -hmm. and uh, I all four years I worked on the radio station uh, Wider FM, W I D R FM, and uh, one one year, so I had a, a morning show that I hosted, and um, we had newscasters, and so this one we had a newscaster come in and give the news during the show, and then. He kind of came over to my partner and I, and he said, "Hey, when do we get paid? When do we get a paycheck?" And we were like, um, "Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, this is all volunteer. I'm not sure. Why, I'm not yeah. sure how you uh, <laughs> thought you were going to get paid for this, but uh, yeah. But actually, I ended up. I my senior year, I was the program director, and that was a paid uh, position. So it was kind of wow. fun that I finally did get uh, paid to do what I loved. Now, my mom, when I was in college, I said. Uh, Oh, I think I'd like to change my major to broadcasting. And uh, she, uh, you know, slapped me upside the head and was like, no, you're not going to do that. So uh, that I, uh, I got a minor in communications. Nice. And uh, but I've never uh, I've never worked in radio outside of now, uh, you know, really? in the yep. suburbs radio. So that was yeah. my my next question for you was. What other stations have you worked at? I assumed you were a radio guy. Yeah, no, just the four years uh, in college there and of just an affinity for I've always enjoyed radio. So um, a big list, you know, big listener of it. But uh, no, never, never did it. I'd love to, but uh, I I don't know if it would pay uh, the mortgage, uh, especially these days. So no. my mom, uh, rest in peace, my mom. But um she was right. I, you know, I, she, she led me down the right path. So I might've not agreed with her back then, but, yeah. uh, but, uh, it, it ended up working out for me. So. Well, listening to your, I listen to your show all the time and your voice. I mean, you, you, I've assumed you had a long radio career. <laughs> yeah. You sound great. I mean, maybe, you should, thank you. Thank you. Maybe, maybe I will. Yeah. Maybe I still will. So maybe well, it, my, like my, it, my retirement job. Yeah. So. It's not like you have to be young and uh, fresh out of college to do stuff like that anymore. If you sound good, they could put you on the radio. I did reach out to the local uh, um, public station here in uh, Grand Rapids not too long ago, uh, but they have not gotten back to me. So um, well, keep yeah. your fingers. Crossed. They're lost. They're lost. <laughs> yeah. so. I, I honestly am shocked that you have not had a career in radio. Oh, well, really? thanks. I appreciate that. So. All right. Back to bourbon and beyond. Yes. Yeah, this yeah. is one of the main things we wanted to talk about. You just got back from traveling. Uh, you were gone for what? Four days? Was it I four was, days? Yeah, show? it's four days. Bourbon and beyond is four days. Uh, I cracked afterwards that like, I think next year they should add a fifth day. I mean, I'm ready <laughs> for it. So, uh, so this was my third time going. Okay. This is the first time that I've gone all four days. I'm going to say the first two times I went, um, I only went three days. First year that I went, uh, and I went with uh, your neighbor Mike Coley. We roomed yeah. together. Nice. Uh, and, Mike's such uh, a good guy. By he's the way. a great guy. I love he's Mike. such a great guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, after three days of that, I had to tap out. I was uh, I was done. So um, so I, I left and went home. Uh, but uh, and then the second year, I had to leave uh, for a work trip on that Sunday, so I didn't uh, get to do Sunday. But last year. Um, on Sunday, it was a very pop oriented, uh, lineup, which was you uh, on that Sunday, uh, which was kind of weird because usually it's very Americana indie mm -hmm. rock. I mean, it's right up my alley of all the different genres that I really listen to the most, Yeah, but it was pop. And the, the, uh, headliner on that Sunday was Bruno Mars. So the first two years I never made it to Sunday mm -hmm. this year. I had to make it to Sunday because uh, so um, my wife and my daughter drove uh, down from Michigan to attend on Saturday and Sunday. So I had to go uh, <laughs> because my daughter loves Zach Bryan and she loves Tyler Childers and they were the headliners on Saturday well, and sun Sunday night. So why would you want to miss that? Though? I, I wouldn't uh, for yeah. sure. And, and um, let me tell you, the lineup on Sunday was uh, insane. Saturday was probably the weakest day for me personally of what I liked. I mean, the music was good, but uh, um, the Friday and Sunday lineups just had like back to back to back to back. Uh, tell, tell me some of the names, because I know a lot of the stuff that you saw is bands yeah. that I love. So. Yeah. 
So, uh, and I, as I uh, mentioned in the uh, uh, pre, uh, pre-show pre meeting that we had, I have to have my iPad here to refer to it because I, I, I honestly can't uh, remember. There's so much uh, good music. but Too uh, much bourbon, not enough beyond. It, it, you didn't it, do the it, bourbon. Thing. I didn't do the bourbon, but I did plenty of the beyond. So, which I can't wait to get my credit card bill at uh, about $20 a beer. Um, Oof. I, yeah, I... Uh, I should own Bourbon and Beyond with how much uh, I think I uh, I spent. I think I'm now an investor. It's, uh, yeah, but it's funny that you came back from Bourbon and Beyond to do the Abbots and Beyond. Uh, that's true. That's a lot of Beyond. A lot so of Beyond in the There's past a lot of Beyond going on here. So <laughs> I'm going to give you the uh, the head. I'm going to give you sort of the head the highlights, the head headliners of uh, each night, okay. and like who I really liked seeing. So on Friday, the headliner was Sting. I heard of him. <laughs> yes. Uh, Gordon Sumner, also known as. And uh, the um, originally, when the festival lineup was announced, the headliner on that night was supposed to be Neil Young. And unfortunately, Neil got sick um, wow. earlier this year, and it was after a show, actually. Uh, so I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but uh, we're about two and a half hours from Detroit. It was a show outside of Detroit that he played, and that was, I think, his last one of the tour. And I think he started playing again, but I, I he canceled on festival dates. So hmm. Sting was the replacement. Um, Sting was great. I've seen him multiple times. He did go heavy into police uh, songs. I think almost half of his set list. I looked at the set list, and I think it was. I think there were nine police songs. I think that was literally half the uh, playlist. So Sting is seventy-two years old and looks phenomenal up there. Yeah. He's in, he's in uh, great great shape. But the highlight of Friday was um, before Sting was Beck. Okay. Beck was incredible. So uh, he just, I mean, you know, all his songs. Yeah. Uh, he's a great showman and uh, he was great. Despite, I still think the mix of his mic was a little bit low during uh, it. But despite that, it was still, I think they had some troubles on the stage that those guys were at. So I'll tell you, Bourbon and Beyond, there's two main stages. They're side by side. Mm -hmm. And so um, what happens is, you know, one band will play one side. There's about a five minute break and then to the other side. Oh, um, this year they, cool. they added some, uh, rear stages in years past. They had, uh, a stage in the bourbon tent and they would have bluegrass artists a lot in there this year. They did add two stages in the back, which did create some Sophie's choice moments during the fest, which <laughs> I, I, that's one thing I liked about bourbon and beyond was like, there was no, I mean, outside of someone was on that bluegrass stage, but there really weren't overlaps because I've been to, um, festivals so i lived for 10 years in chicago so i've been to Lollapalooza a number mm -hmm. of times uh they have riot fest in chicago that i've been to um as well as um pitchfork fest so i'd been to all of those in chicago and all of them have especially Lollapalooza, because they have a lot of stages there there's always you know overlaps and just tough choices that you have to make so i did like that about bourbon and beyond that you didn't have to make those tough choices now this year i had to make those tough choices I'll what tell was you. the toughest one you had to make so um, this one is a band that you and I both really, really like and have been getting into. And it was the Red Clay Strays oh, God. up against Black Pumas. Okay. Yeah, that's yep. a tough one. So and Red Clay Strays were playing on one of the backstages um, and then uh, Black Pumas on one of the main stages. Red so, Clay Strays will not be on a backstage for long. No, and they <laughs> the crowd that they pulled in, they by far probably had the largest crowd at the backstages, and it it uh, it really should have been on probably the main stage. I think you know when they booked this and put it all together, obviously they sort of um, they've blown up yeah. in the last couple of months, really uh, yeah. a few months, I guess, more than anything, but. Um, yeah, they're not going to be a backstage act for, for long. Uh, you, you actually got me into them. You and my friend Vic, who were at the same show. Yeah, I was behind him in line uh, at the show. You so don't didn't know, know that he was your friend at that time, but we yeah. just pie pieced it together uh, afterwards. Well, so. I see pictures. You guys both posted the same pictures because you were in the VIP line. Same yeah. pictures, uh, meeting the band backstage and all this stuff. I'm like, they're at the same show. How crazy. And I talked to you about it and you're like, Oh, I was in line with him. Yeah. 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 He, I was right behind him. I remember. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was a weird experience that show here in Grand Rapids. So I, a while ago I had gotten tickets with my daughter, um, and we were going and then, um, that morning I just happened to see and on Facebook, I'm in an Americana group and I saw a woman on there saying, Hey, 
I have VIP tickets um, and I can't use them. And so oh, I, man, that's how you got those tickets. Yeah. So you had, you had to have a ticket to the show to get in. And then the VIP was right. yeah separate, you know, and it allowed early entry. Uh, you got to meet the band. They played one of their songs from, cause the al- new album wasn't out yet. Right. Uh, and so um, it just got you in for that. Uh, and then of course we got a spot on, um, the rail them because we were in early. So we had a great, <laughs> a great spot. So yeah, it was just a woman on Facebook. She's I'm sorry, I can't use them. And I, I, uh, I was like, I'm, I will gladly take them. I'm sorry. You can't use them. And I offered her, could I buy you a shirt or something? And she said, no, just, um, uh, send me a, you know, a video from the show. And yeah. so, uh, which was awesome. So that was super cool. I will never see them in a club that size again. I don't think, no, um, I no. think that place holds about a thousand. So, I mean, and it was that's sold pretty, out. It was, it's a big, pretty intimate to see yeah. a band like that. That's just, they're going to be so huge. Yeah, they, uh, they are. So highly recommend they're great live. Yep. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, that was, so that, that was one of the runs that I was going to say was like, um, sort of these back to back, um, moments. So, um, they played on Saturday. And so, like I said, I missed out on, uh, uh, black Pumas who I've seen before. You know, the okay. interesting thing was I thought, um, like on Saturday, almost every artist I saw, I had seen before. Mm. Um, I think I said that on my Facebook is the only artist that I saw on Saturday that I'd never seen, uh, in concert before was uh, JJ gray and Mofro. And, and uh, Ooh, I've seen twice in concert. Uh, and well, I, I love them. Yeah. They're great. Um, and they come here a lot, almost every summer we have an amphitheater and they are always on, on the lineup. So now I'm going to go see them uh, again when they, when they come. But Quick story. Uh, when I saw them, the first time I saw them, they played a free show in upstate New York here. Uh, we went to the show. We sat literally right next to the stage. We could have reached out and touched them. They played a free concert. They played for like two and a half hours and blew everyone away. And I'm like, man, these guys are good. Well, and it was so cool to see them like that. That's one of the bummers of a fest, um, you know, is that usually they're restricted to, especially yeah. earlier in the day, they're 30 minute, 40 minute sets, you know, yeah. at, at most. Now the headliners will get an hour and a half hour, 45 minutes. But so you get little tastes of, of the, the band, but yeah, still, it makes you I mean, want to check them out more. That's the, for sure. Yeah. And there's the volume of artists. So I, I'm going to, let me just kind of tell you like who I saw. So on, on uh, Friday, um, we started the day off with KT Tunstall and she was okay. fantastic. She was fantastic. Uh, saw Amanda Shires on Friday. Nice. She was great. Uh, we saw Lyle Lovett. Oh, wow. Uh, the Wallflowers, oh, um, God. Fleet Foxes, nice. uh, Matchbox 20, which shockingly, like I laughed at them when I saw them on the line. I'm like, eh, whatever, but <laughs> I knew every song of theirs yeah, and, they, and, and Rob really? Thomas was an amazing showman up there. So they, they impressed me back and then finished the night with sting. So, and then on uh, Friday, that's a, great, that's a great lineup of music, right? There. Oh, it was, it was amazing. Now Friday, I think Friday was even better. I think maybe only topped by s- Sunday, but Friday we saw uh, started the day off with his golden messenger. Um, he's great. Saw JJ Gray, and Mofro, uh, Molly Tuttle, and Golden Highway. Okay. Uh, Mike Coley and I saw them two years ago at, at uh, Bourbon and Beyond in the bluegrass tent, and now they were out on the uh, wow. on the big stage. They they're fantastic. Bruce Hornsby was there. He was with okay. the, his band called the Noisemakers. Uh, we saw them. An artist from West Virginia, I don't know if you know him, uh, Charles Wesley Godwin. He's uh, I've heard the name. He leans yeah. a little more country, but I yeah. definitely Americana. Um, he was he is fantastic. Um, the Red Clay Strays, as I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Tedeschi Trucks Band, uh, who are great. Oh, and yeah. then Dave Matthews Band was the headliner that night. Those are all the bands I saw. Now, on that same day, people I didn't see. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, Wyatt Flores. I don't know if you've uh, heard I'm, him, but he's I'm great, good. too. He He's from Oklahoma. Okay. And um, I saw him here in Grand Rapids this summer, too. Actually, the night before I saw Red Clay Strays, he he played here. So What's his name again? Uh, Wyatt Flores. So i got to write that down because yeah. I will check him out. I trust so, your taste in music. He, Here's some of the artists that I didn't get to see on that Saturday. Again, these tough choices, but Black Pumas, The Head and the Heart. Oh, wow. Um, 
Melissa Etheridge. Oh, and she's amazing now. Uh, Jerry Douglas Band. Oh. Um, so, I mean, just again, there's just so much good music. So Saturday, the headliner was Zach Bryan. Uh, yeah. That's my daughter, really loves him. He's Saturday good. was very country as the uh, lineup. Um, so was for me, was not my favorite day, but um, I know you love her, but Sierra Farrell was that day. So she was great. She was fantastic. So, I loved her. I loved uh, her. She well, is so good. What we ended up doing was, so um, for Sierra Farrell, we were camped out in a good spot in front of the stage. And uh, my wife and daughter said, hey, what if we stay here for uh, Zach Bryan? And I said, well, if we stay here for Zach Bryan, I'm going to tell you that will be we're in the same spot for seven hours. Yeah. And they were game on. And so wow. I was like, all right, fine. So we did it. And we st stood there. We had a very good spot. And we stood <laughs> for seven hours. So uh, my wife almost did get into a fight at one point with really? a, a woman who tried to sort of barge up in front. You know, oh, if you're, you know, at shows and general yeah. admission, you know, you got those people trying to sneak up and. Uh, every show after yeah, standing for a number of hours, you get a little angry, you know, if you have somebody doing that, but, uh, we had, we had great. so Sierra Farrell was, was fantastic. And Zach Bryan's great too. He, yeah. um, this is my second time seeing him. Cause I took my daughter to see him in uh, Columbus, uh, this summer. So now Sunday, I think for me was the, the quality and just the back to back to back to back was amazing. Okay. Um, so on Sunday, it started with, um, I'm going to go through the sort of the, well, the beginning of the day was an artist named Neil Francis. Um, now there's two Neil Francis's. This is the Neil N-E-A-L. Okay. And he's sort of a funky, he, he's a keyboard player. He's from Chicago. He, he brings the funk. Um, <laughs> he's got a great band. Uh, I love the guy. I've seen him uh, multiple times. And so he was early in the afternoon. So saw him, which was great way to start uh the day he's coming here to grand rapids in november uh, that same club that uh, red clay strays has played out we're gonna go see him so he's, yeah, he's cool. fantastic nice um okay. so started the day with him uh and then so then finished the day with the band mount joy i don't know if you know i do know them yeah, yeah they've yeah, opened for the Abrams brothers okay so they were great um i was surprised like i knew their one hit um, but i didn't know the rest of their catalog yeah they I, are good they're really i good. really liked them yep that was followed by uh, the War on Drugs. Uh, do you know them? They're from Philadelphia. I don't uh, think so. Yeah, the they're they're in. I'm gonna call, classify them as more indie rock, but okay. uh, I I really like uh, I really like their last couple albums, and they have a couple live albums which are fantastic. So that I'm writing, I'm writing that one down. Yeah, War on Drugs. Uh, then the National was after that. Uh, yeah, another sure. great in, you know indie mean? indie band, the National. So. Hmm. Yep. And then My Morning Jacket, who are yeah, from Louisville. Yeah. So that was cool. Followed by the headliner that evening was Tyler Childers. And that He's, was all back to back to back wow, to back yeah. as you just kind of went back and forth. So Tyler Childers blows me away. He's so good. He was real good. He has yeah. a great stage setup and his band is really tight. So, um, yeah. He's on my bucket list. I have not seen him yet. Uh, I need to. My daughter wants to see him, too. She loves him. So. He, the, that was my that was my first time uh, seeing him. So, but some of the bands I couldn't see on Sunday then was um, the War and Treaty. I don't know oh, if you, you know Treaty. them. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, Dinosaur Junior. Okay. Because of some of these uh, conflicts, um, and Future Birds. And I don't know if you've checked out Future Birds at all, but no. uh, they they had a new album that came out in July that is uh, really strong. Uh, a lot of uh, listeners to the Rock in the Suburbs podcast actually. I think picked the future birds last album for the new music. So I'm writing that one down Check too. Okay. Are you not familiar with the war and treaty? No, no, I am. No, no, oh, actually I am. They, so they, they actually uh, have origins here in Michigan. Um, you know, that's a husband and wife and uh, they were in Albion, Michigan, which is a small college town um, all, off of I-94 sort of uh, between Kalamazoo and, uh, and Detroit and yeah, no, they're great. It's just, I couldn't, uh, I yeah, couldn't yeah. see them. So actually they're coming here to Grand Rapids next March and they just announced it and put tickets on sale. So actually I have, that reminds me, I have to ask my daughter cause she didn't respond to me. She likes them. Yeah. Now, they sing a song with Zach Bryan, the oh, hey driver okay. song. And so right. that's how she knows them, but no, they are, they are so, such nice people. They're like yeah. two of the nicest people. They've done a lot of the, 
the Avids at the Beach shows. I don't know if you're familiar with those. It's like okay, a, yep. a in Mexico they do. But yep. they've, they've been there and played with that a few times. Uh, they're just really nice people, really talented, nice they, people. They seem to be, We saw them, uh, my daughter and I saw Chris Stapleton last year, and they mm-hmm. opened up for uh, Chris Stapleton. So Very cool. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Wow. That's uh, – wow. What a whirlwind of music. And I'm sure I've left off about 20 other bands that uh, people know. And What a great festival. Yeah, I didn't it, it's a it. it's a really tremendous festival. I To me, it's the best one. It's right in my wheelhouse. So, I mean, yeah. as far as it's got the right amount of sort of Americana, it's indie rock. They'll the sometimes quality. bring in some classic rock in there. Nice. Um, okay. You know, like a, I'm not calling Matchbox 20 classic rock, but kind of that, you know, the, the, they have some elements of that. A few years ago, they had the Doobie Brothers. Oh, wow. So, uh, well, Neil Young, he would, I mean, if he would have been there, he's classic rock. Sting would be kind of that. So anyway, it, it's a great mix. Um, it's a great location. I like Louisville as a city. Um, I have a great time anytime I go there. Um, and it's, uh, for me, it's only like a five, five and a half hour drive for from here. So it's easy to uh, to get to. And then they do a thing there, the um, promoter. So he has another fest that's called Louder Than Life, which is this coming weekend. Oh, wow. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it's a more of a hard rock um, fest. It's the same promoter. So they're set up for four more days. Wow. Yeah, Same promoter. They use the same infrastructure. You know, they change it up some, but they use obviously the same main stages. And uh, and it's it's smart. You know, to yeah, to, definitely to do that. We actually met the the producer. His name is Danny Wimmer, and um, they did a five k for the first time on Saturday morning, and uh, I uh, got talked into running the five k uh, by one of the uh, one of my other friends that was uh, going there. So, and, and I am a runner. I do run. Uh, okay, for well, that's good. So but I, you yeah. were in the middle of a festival. That's I know. <laughs> I know it was uh, it was fun though. It was fun to do, and he he ran the the Danny Wimmer ran the race, so we met him afterwards. And uh, how many people ran that there. like extremely hungover? Um, you know what's funny is I don't think there were that many participants in it that were actually attending the fest. I oh. think a lot of them were just local Louisville runners that were in the five k. I think we were the exception of people that were actually <laughs> attending the fest. So, I, and. I survived it. I, I, I uh, was you shocked. Finished? Yeah. You, so. you finished the whole thing. You, oh, you I finished. Yeah, yeah. I finished it. But I mean, just then I did the fest for the whole day after that. And then a whole day, another day after that. So I bet you slept good that night though. I did. I did. <laughs> that's for sure. So. All right, uh, man. Yes. That's, that's awesome. Well, I yeah. So your listeners, I highly recommend when they, uh, when they announce the lineup, give it a look. And uh, if you can, it's always usually like the, what was it? The second to last weekend in September. They haven't announced the dates yet for next year, but um, when that lineup comes out, I would uh, don't sleep on it. It's a yeah. great, uh, a great uh, festival to attend. That sound, sounds amazing. Sounded amazing. Um, yeah. All right. So we are running short now on time. We're over when I normally end, but since we know people, we can go a little yeah. longer. Yes. Uh, you pick the music. I always have my guests pick the music for the episode. And yep. you threw one, two, three, four, five, six, six songs at me. Tell I me did. what you picked and why you picked them. Well, okay. So first, I it's this uh, pod this podcast and radio show is called the Avets and Beyond. So I felt like I needed to um, uh, choose uh, some Avet Brothers music. Appreciate it. And uh, also being from Michigan, then it made the choice easy. I went with uh, Pretty Girl from Michigan. So makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, there's no other logic to it than just those two reasons, uh, basically. It's a good song, but uh, it is that's a great song. really why uh, I, I went for that. So, sadly, I was supposed to see them when they played in Detroit this summer. Um, but then I one of my best friends in the world loves the band Built to Spill. And uh, they were playing in Chicago the next night, along with my Detroit Tigers playing the Chicago Cubs that day. So, oh, okay. I had to go with him to that. So I, we, and I'm maybe one of your listeners bought my tickets, but I had some great seats uh, that I ended up sell, had to sell, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll forgive you for that. Yes. Okay. But Avet brothers were uh, headliners last year at um, um, bourbon and beyond. It was right. a, a great set. So yep. um, I also chose um, the uh, hog slop string band. And Sierra Farrell, they have a song called Oldsmobile that came Love out. Uh, yeah. So um, 
I chose that just for the reason of at the very first Bourbon and Beyond, um, Mike Coley and I saw the hog slop uh, string band play in the Bourbon tent. And then this year I saw Sierra Farrell, uh, of course, play. So and Oldsmobile, I did grow up in Detroit, so I'm from the Motor City. So, you know, it all sort of ties in together in there. So uh, the next one I chose is uh, Jason Isbell in the 400 unit. Um, probably one of my favorite uh, artists, uh, the song Miles. Mm-hmm. That's the closing song from his latest album, uh, Weather Veins. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, are you familiar with the the song? Sure. You, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what I what I like about it is that um, it sort of starts out as one kind of song and then morphs into another one. So I heard him, and now I'm I'm uh, trying to remember, but I know he described it as a Wings song, uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, and then it goes into. I want to say Allman Brothers or something, but it's another, I mean, it's just two different, it's a very long song. So pr- probably going to also add to the uh, overrun here of this show. But we're going uh, to a two hour episode this yeah, week. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a fantastic song. And like I said, he's one of my favorite artists. And actually my wife and I are going for our anniversary in a couple of weeks to see him play the Ryman in uh, Nashville. So, oh, nice. What a yeah. great venue that is. Yep. Uh, I chose the Tragically Hip Um I know your neighbor's a big fan of them, Mike Coley. Uh, I chose the song uh, Bob Cajun. And uh, that's um, just because I, this week, have been watching. There's a documentary series that uh, just came out, a four-part series. So in my travels uh, about the band, The Tragically Hip, on uh, Amazon Prime. So um, they're a great Canadian rock band. Um, If your listeners aren't familiar with them, they should definitely check them out. Unfortunately, the lead singer, Gord Downey, passed away. Um, a few years back uh, of brain cancer at the young age of 53. So unfortunately the band has um, stopped, but their music is out there always, you know, always. And, um, you know, growing up in Detroit, uh, we were right across the river from um, Windsor, Ontario. So we got a lot of Canadian content uh, on the radio. And so we listened to, I, I knew them, you know, from that they never really made it that big in the U S huge in Canada, yeah, wow. full hockey stadiums, arenas up there <laughs> here in the U S uh, outside of the border towns, they would play much smaller venues. I actually saw them one time I was in Atlanta for business and they played a small theater there and it was, it was fun. You know, I talked to some people that came from Canada and they're like, yeah, we come all the way down here to see them because we can see them in such a small uh, venue here yeah, versus right. in a, an arena, you know, in Canada. So Great band, um, and again, was just on my mind from watching the documentary. Yeah, Mike posted something about watching that documentary, and he said, if you need me, I'll be in the corner crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I haven't gotten to the uh, – I'm on the rise of the band, so I haven't gotten to the uh, tears uh, part yeah, of it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I chose the Red Clay Strays, uh, Drowning. That's from uh, their latest album, Moment of Truth. I think I have that right. Sometimes I'm terrible with remembering those things, but again, Moment just, of Truth was the first album. Oh, sorry, it's um, yes, you are right. What is the second album called? Uh, it's, it has moments in it, though. So yes, I'll give you that. Uh, and I can't remember off the top of my head now. Of course, um, yeah, I I have it sitting over here in my vinyl pile somewhere. Yeah, I've got uh, it here too. Uh, right here. It's made by these moments you know they have a moment in both their titles and that's why it's uh, very confusing it is confusing i heard a story they told about naming the album and they didn't want to name it that because of the first album having the same word in it but they couldn't come up with anything better so they went with that (laughs) there there you go um and then the uh, last one i chose is john craigie um john craigie yeah so i really love his uh well, he now has an even newer album that just mm-hmm. came out, but uh, this was his album that came out earlier in the year uh, called uh, Pagan Church, and I chose the uh, first track from it called Damn My Love, and that, that's been one of my favorite uh, albums of the year, and I felt like it fits with the show, and so uh, that's... It's so good that, live. You know? yeah. uh, his live albums are spectacular. He is such a talented musician, songwriter, but he's funny. So he's so funny. He, he is funny. His latest album, which I'm going to admit I haven't listened to. And again, I haven't listened I, yet either. I want I've to. I've been um, on the road a lot and at a fest. 
but it's called Greatest Hits. Just kidding, live, no hit. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a great that shows you his his uh his humor there. So he's great. He's I'm so hoping great. to catch him sometime when he uh comes to town here. I have friends that have seen him many times. Actually, I have one of my friends that's been on the show is good friends with him. Um, and we've tried getting him on with me, but it ha- just hasn't worked out yet. But uh he is just He's hilarious. He's really funny and really talented. So he 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 is, and those live albums are out there on the uh, streamings. So uh, yes, Beatles, the Beatles. Uh, I can't remember what they're they're called right here right now, but uh, you got to listen. Abbey Road lately, or I, I can't yeah. remember what they're called. They're yeah. they're good. Check them out uh, yep. if you haven't listened to them yet. All right. So that that was all the songs. Uh, how do you have trouble ever with your show filling two hours or is it easy for you to never I always say there's just way too much music out there you know I try to focus on my show too I didn't mention it earlier but I try to focus on you know I get a lot of the new music on there I want to get you know new music out to folks yeah. and then you know some some older tracks too but I I try to focus more on the new so um, there's so much good music and so many different ways to listen to it and discover it. And, you know, I hope suburbs radio is one of those ways for people to find stuff, but, uh, and the podcast is too, as I mentioned, there's, um, every month, a couple n- new music episodes, and there's been things that I've learned from that, that I've, you know, then checked out. So, so I'm going to start listening to that podcast. Now I'm going to kick myself for never listening to it before. Cause it's going to be really right up my alley. I already you, know that you, uh, you have, what did I say? 1,957 episodes to catch up on Todd. So now the good news <laughs> right, is that a lot of them are, they're shorter episodes. So they're, you know, 15, 20 minutes. So they're not all like an hour long, like a lot of other uh, podcasts yeah. or two hours long, like this podcast uh, tonight. So. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> record, record long episode here tonight. Yeah. Again, uh, I'm glad I know people that we can pull this off. Just don't cut it off by mistake, like at an hour, because people are going to miss out. Well, miss well out. I'll, I, I'll, I will try not to. How okay. do you feel this time of year? You know, with your time slot, you're competing against Friday Night Lights. It's got to be rough out there. All those high school football games people are going to. So, that, yeah, that's true. But you know what? I love having the show on Friday night. I know you've mentioned, do I ever want to switch it up? And I don't think I do. I just, I enjoy listening to to my show that's weird to say uh but i look forward to friday night to sit down after a long week of work and listen to the show and i i think other people may do the same i don't know um you know being a friday and i know there's other things to do people are going out on friday night but that's i thankful for mixcloud because then people can just listen yeah no mix mixcloud is great that's all on demand there so yeah yeah, yeah it's great uh, but so suburbsradio.com uh, if you haven't listened to any of the shows, get on there. I, you know, you've got a, a lot of new listeners from the Avid fans that followed me over here and the people I've seen, I look at who listens to shows like on a bunch of the other shows. And a lot of my friends from the fan group have listened to a bunch of other shows and that's uh, awesome. regular. No, that's that's awesome. No, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, appreciate it. we appreciate it. We, so tell a friend, wait, yeah. wait. As David Letterman used to say, wake the neighbors, tell the kids. So <laughs> tell them about Suburbs Radio. So. All right, Keith. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to listen to some, some music now. We'll get you back on someday and uh, you. talk again. You're a fun guest to have on. Well, I, so. pre- I appreciate it. So. And I still can't believe you never did radio professionally. Can't believe uh, it. I know. It's hard to believe. Well, now Maybe I'm going to go submit some air check tapes out there. Yeah. So forget this sales job that I have. I'm going to do that. So. <laughs> See, you know, you're a sales guy too, huh? I'm a sales I am, guy yeah, yeah. Outside of here, so. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, oh, good luck with your uh, future radio career. Thanks again for coming on, Keith Jacobson. Uh, thank you for stopping by the Avidson Beyond. Appreciate it. Thank you, Todd. All right, take care.